Welcome scholars, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at the Energy Skater Lab. Go to Google, type in FET Energy Skate Park. Pick the first one that comes up. Click Run Now. You'll need to install Java if you haven't yet. It's a free download at java.com. So here's what you'll see when you first open it up. You have a skater going back and forth. Keep in mind that you can change the track. And you can also change the skater. You can pick Superstar Girl. You can also pick Bulldog, Bug, or Ball. Let's go back to Ken. OK. Um, other things here. You have other things you can um, put in a potential energy reference. So here it says PE equals zero at this dotted line. You can raise this line to wherever you want. And I'm going to do something here. I'm going to hit reset just to put everything back to the way it was. There we go. There are some very useful graphs that you can open up. First is a bar graph. And let me pull this in so you can see it. Here it is. So notice how when as Ken goes back and forth, his kinetic energy in green reaches a peak at the bottom, and it is zero at the top. And notice how his potential energy is greatest when he's at the top and least when he's at the bottom. His potential energy never goes all the way to zero, because look at where we have our potential energy reference for zero. We are saying that P equals zero at the ground. If we want to make P equal zero at the bottom of the ramp, then we can just slide it up. And now notice how the potential energy does go to zero when he's at the bottom. Notice two other parts of the graph. Thermal energy related to heat. Right now there is no friction, so there is no generation of thermal energy. And notice total energy is the sum of all three of these other energies. Right now there is no friction. We can introduce friction by clicking track friction. And right now it's none. We can add it to something in the middle. Notice what happens to Ken. He is losing energy. So he's losing um, energy, but the track and the other parts of the system, including his skateboard and the air, are increasing in thermal energy. They're getting hotter. Eventually, all the energy he has has been converted into thermal energy. Let's take a look at another type of graph. I'm going to hit reset, make everything back to the way it was. Let's click on energy versus position. So this graph shows potential energy in blue, kinetic energy in green, I'm going to again bring potential energy reference up to the bottom of the ramp. And I'm going to hit clear and have it restart. So there's this constant exchange between potential energy converting to kinetic energy and then kinetic energy converting back to potential energy. If you take a look at page three of your lab handout, it looks like this. I want to show you how this works. So our skater, Ken, has the greatest potential energy when he's at the top left position here. So we can put a dot here. And he, as he's going back and forth, he has the least potential energy at the bottom. So as he's going from the top to the bottom, he is losing potential. And then gaining potential energy so that by the time he gets back to the top right, he now has the same potential energy as before. Every time he's at the bottom, he has no potential energy. So this graph goes constantly between maximum and zero potential energy. What about the kinetic energy? Where is he going to have the greatest kinetic energy? When he's at the bottom, he will have greatest kinetic energy. 
And I'm going to put this dot at the top because uh, that's how many squares up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he started with seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven units of potential energy. So by the time he gets to the bottom, he'll have seven units of kinetic energy. At the very top left, when he was when he first started to drop, he had no kinetic energy for that very final, that very initial instant. But as he was falling, he was gaining kin gaining kinetic energy. Now, let me see if I can do that cleaner. Gaining kinetic energy, and then as he hits the bottom and begins to go back up the other side, he is now losing kinetic energy as he slows down. And then he is gaining kinetic energy. So at the bottom again, he's going to have maximum kinetic energy. And I would like you, I'm just showing you the first two cycles or so. I want you to um, complete all the cycles that the graph gives you room for. Total energy would be the sum of kinetic plus potential. Oh, actually, sorry, total thermal energy. There is no friction in this particular case, so there is no thermal energy. It's going to be zero the whole way along. Hopefully you can draw that a little bit cleaner than I am with my mouse. Then we get to total energy, the sum of those three. And for, for every point along it, we can just add them up. This was zero for thermal energy, this is zero for kinetic energy, this is seven for potential energy. So total energy is going to be here. And as he rolls down, he's losing potential energy but gaining kinetic energy. So if you look at the sum of them, they always add up to the same total amount. In other words, there is no loss of energy. It's just going from one form into another. All right, now what happens when we add in friction? So we're back with Ken. We're going to add some friction here, just a little bit of friction. And notice what's happening with the graphs over here. Um, as, let me clear it so we can start from scratch here. So this is a good time to show you another type of graph that will be helpful for you. Energy versus time. This is more what your graph will um, should look like here. Uh, so we have kinetic energy in green, potential energy in blue, thermal energy in red, and total energy in yellow. And now we're going to introduce some friction. Add in a little bit of friction here. And let's see what's happening with our skater. He's losing kinetic energy and potential energy, what we call mechanical energy, the two together. But he is gaining thermal energy. So notice how these graphs are getting shorter, except the thermal energy is increasing. But the total energy in yellow on the top is always the same, because it's the sum of the other three. So going back to our handout for the lab, on the last page, we are doing it with friction. So the graphs are going to look similar, but as you can see from the simulation, the potential energy will be decreasing over time. Uh, the maximum potential energy will decrease over time as he goes less and less high. And his maximum kinetic energy will be decreasing over time. Um, so I'm going to let you finish this part here. I want to point out to you that I want you to be accurate as you're drawing these. We know the total energy is always the same. This is the law of conservation of energy. So we know it's going to always be up here. But in terms of total thermal energy, if you're saying that he's going to have one unit of total thermal energy by that point, then whatever the energy is up here, so maybe at the bottom his kinetic energy is um, six, and his potential energy at the bottom here is zero. Notice these all had to add up to 7. I keep saying 7 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units. These are just arbitrary units. You can think of it as joules or kilojoules, whatever. Um, so this is 0 plus 6 
plus 1 equals 7. So be accurate like that. All right, and going back to the uh, skater, there's a, there are many cool things that you can do with this too. There's some other features. You can do this on other planets, like on the moon or on Jupiter. And you'll notice that the value for g is different on Jupiter. So um, you can see more rapid acceleration and deceleration. If you want to go into deep space where there is no gravity, uh-oh, then you can do that. Bring him back. There he is. And um, what else? You can try experimenting with large or small amounts of friction. You can edit the skater somehow. You can change his mass. Yeah. So you can see, does a heavier skater actually go higher on the other side? If we double his mass to 150, then um, will that mean that he goes farther? These are all the kind of things that you can change. All right, scholars, have fun. See you tomorrow.